known as bulletproof, even though you might think you are. I hate being in a wheelchair. But yeah, I, I don't regret jumping off that waterfall. It has come with trials and it has come with a lot of tears. But yeah, I, I can't say that I regret it because I've, I've learned so much um, and I wouldn't, probably wouldn't be where I am today if I didn't jump that waterfall. spending the weekend with my cousins and heard about this waterfall just outside Tauranga at a place called Omanoa Falls. Well, I thought I should go check it out and have a swim and stuff, it was a hot day. Um, and then me and my cousin's fiance decided to jump the waterfall. I decided to go first. Took the jump. I had kind of tucked my knees in, and so when I hit the water, because it was so high, it, yeah, it just felt like floor hitting the ground. So when I hit the water, it kind of, um, because I wasn't completely straight, to just kind of slip right in there. All I could remember was not being able to feel my legs. I remember yelling for help, but no one could hear me. And so I just had to swim it to the edge. Um, by the time I got to the edge, everyone else had realised something was wrong. That's what fractured my vertebrae. Um, the ambulance sent a helicopter, which came about maybe 45 minutes to an hour later. So yeah, during that time I was, yeah, just, you know, thinking, you know, why I can't move my legs. So I was actually filming the jump. Um, I was actually quite far from him though, so that I could get a good angle, I guess. Um, so when he initially jumped, I had no idea that he was injured until um, his uncle, who was actually near the rock, jumped in to grab him, and then I knew something was wrong. There were signs saying, you know, no trespassing, and we just ignored them. I was kind of just thinking, you know, just have fun, you know? I wasn't really, I wasn't, yeah, thinking anything along the lines of, oh, man, this is easy, I can do this. I was just thinking, you know, this, this would be fun if I jumped the waterfall, um, only because I had seen um, other people do it online, on social media. It didn't really seem like a big deal to me. I thought I'd just jump and it'd be fun. So 
So it's been about a year and six months, I think, since my accident. Me and my wife, we had only been married for about six months. Just moved into our home. I mean, everything was pretty much, pretty much going for us. Yeah, I felt pretty happy and then all of a sudden had my accident. Life has changed a lot in some ways, but just stayed the same in others. Just trying to live a normal life how I would um, before my accident, yeah. Me and, me and Ari, we don't really, we don't really go out much. We're both working now and looking after me takes a lot out of Ari. She has to spend a lot of time not only taking care of herself, but me as well. To be honest, I'm pretty happy with how things are going at the moment. Stay the same in terms of I have the same goals and same um, aspirations. Um, just going about it now, I have, just have to do it differently. And me and Ari work together as co-managers at the Anytime Fitness here in Gisborne. Working is important to me. Just, just makes me feel like I'm, like I'm living a normal life. Just tell him that he needs to... Um, bring ID. Yeah, bring ID. And so our roles are basically the same. But because I'm in a, I'm in a wheelchair, it, we kind of um, divide the responsibilities. I love working with Ephraim. Work has definitely been a blessing for him because it's kept his mind busy, kept his mind off um, what he can't do anymore. A lot of people just stop by the office to say how inspiring he is or how they've, how he's given them an extra push because they, they always say, you know, why do, what's my excuse not to come to the gym if Ephraim's here? I just love training in the gym. I've always been pretty into um, big muscles. Last year I competed at a wheelchair bodybuilding show. I'm done well there, and so this year I'm just focusing on um, taking that further. Something that I've done before my accident and since having my accident, it's still something that I can do now and just makes me feel normal. We kind of just do all our morning routine here because our house that we're currently living in is not wheelchair accessible, so we just thought while we're coming to the gym anyway, so they have a disabled toilet, we'll just do all the cares and stuff here. And then we have breakfast and then open up for work. Yeah, so Ari, she's employed by a um, caring company. She's my full-time carer. She's probably the most important person in my life at the moment. She does everything for me, helping me to get dressed, helping me make all my meals, going to the toilet. She helps me with everything. I try to let her know that I'm thankful and that I love her just because she gives so much of her own time to me. Good man, hey. Yeah, not too good. Let's see. So, thanks for coming, man. Um, today we'll just be doing like full body, full body workout. It took me about three months after getting out of the spawn unit to get back into work. Getting back into full time work really helped me mentally as well as uh, physically. Yeah, I kind of just enjoy training people who are in the wheelchairs because I kind of just know where they're coming from and understand maybe the things that they might be going through. Hold a little. Five. Four, three, two, one, nice. 
The goal one day is to own our own gym um, and to become self-employed. We'll go shoot over to the lap pool there. To become our own boss. Um, and then we have people working under us, taking care of it for us. But I just really just want to take care of uh, my family, put us in a position where we don't have to worry about money or anything like that. I really just want to secure my family's um, welfare. A close friend of mine invited me over to his wedding in Australia. So I went there and then the girl that he was marrying is Harry's sister. And so we met in the bridal party line. We were partners and then, yeah, we just kind of kept in contact from there. And yeah, couldn't be bothered doing the long distance thing. So we thought I might, might as well get married. Some of my goals definitely was not to get married, um, but I guess Ephraim came into my life at a time that I now see was perfect. Looking at old photos of us when I'm standing up makes me miss being able to stand and be able to do normal things. At first when I had my accident it kind of just felt like these two things kind of just weighing me down, really. Because I, I'm just sitting down all day, the muscle just wastes away. Muscles aren't really getting worked anymore, so they just shrink in size. So it makes my upper body look bigger than what it really is. I always wear pants. I don't really like wearing shorts and. People look at my legs and say, oh, what happened to your legs? <laughs> Almost every day I try to do something with my legs, whether it be stretching. Yeah, I definitely feel like I still have ownership of my legs. It's hard to not think about um, my legs because uh, I have to have to worry about them all the time, you know, because um, I can't. I don't have much sensation. So if I'm like um, by a heater, I have to make sure that if I am close to a heater, that my legs aren't, you know, getting burnt or anything. Because I, I obviously I can't feel what's going on. Becoming independent is the ultimate goal, and driving is just a big, real, real big part of that. Uh, before I got a hand control car, um, I couldn't go anywhere without um, Ari taking me, you know, dropping me off, picking me up, and so that was kind of really, um, took a lot getting used to. I couldn't just jump in the car and go to places wherever I wanted to go. Definitely don't take my independence for granted now. So I just consider to be independent a, a huge, a huge blessing. How's it going? I trained this morning mm -hmm. and um, okay. it got, yeah, just got a bit sore, okay. yeah. You're helping with the injury recovery um, in the upper body is, is really important for Ephraim and that's what we're here to do hopefully to help speed up that so that you can get back to your weight training. So feeling all right now with lifting it up and that when you got out of your chair? Yeah. Yep. yeah. Still all right? Mm -hmm. For Ephraim, of course, at the moment, using your upper body every day to help with getting around, not just for work, using the computer and all those kind of activities. Always, always trying to look after, especially the shoulders. When you're having to transfer in and out of your chair 20 plus times a day, so it's, yeah, it can get not worrying, but you just make sure you've got to look after yourself. We had an ACC manager come and talk to us about what options were out there. Before his accident, I was a carer, and so he kind of just said, Well, since you were a carer before, do you want to carry on? 
um, doing what you were doing just this time with Ephraim as your client. So at the time, it was either I had to stop working and earning money and just live off what he was earning from ACC or to take on board that responsibility as a carer and wife. He just is comfortable with me doing his personal cares instead of having some stranger come into the home, shower him, change him, stuff like that. And then I think the cons are just the fact that I have to try and juggle being his wife and his care at the same time. It's a real hard job to do, to do the duties of a wife and the duties of working as a carer for him. It definitely has mentally impacted Ari a lot. She doesn't really get time to look after herself or take care of herself or do the things that she wants to do. It's all about me, really, and, yeah, I kind of feel a little bit uh, sorry. Yeah, I do feel sorry for her at times where she has to kind of put her own wants and needs aside in order to um, take care of me. Moving to New Zealand from Australia was probably one of the hardest things I've ever had to do to kind of leave the norm, to um, kind of leave family as well, um, to leave what I had um, planned to do and what I already had um, to me was perfect. And so for me to leave and sacrifice all of that to move here, it was really hard. I was studying and I was working towards um, heading into university. I had a good job, good paying job, um, as you do in Sydney. When he gets upset at things or when he gets grumpy or sad, depressed about his way of life, it obviously affects me because I'm right there by his side and we have to just go through it together. Um, so whatever emotions he goes through, I go through at the same time. We're pretty much like one person. I sometimes find it hard to think that I don't get, you know, enough credit for the things that I go through and have to put up with. I don't know, I try not to look at it like I'm doing it for the credit, you know? I just, I'm doing it out of love, but when you do so much and everyone's saying how inspiring Ephraim is or, you know, the feel sorry for him and just completely ignore the fact that the reason why he is where he is is because of a team effort. It's hard, but I would never change what's happened um, because I've learnt so much and I've come so far in life because of what's happened. Everyone sees this guy in a wheelchair doing these pretty cool things, but no one really sees the work that goes into that. And so she, she kind of makes sure that I show up to all my appointments that I can work, making all my meals. She spends a lot of time being selfless and uh, making sure that everything that I need really is taken care of. Clients had his attitude, they'd all be all be successful in everything I do with him. My own trainer, he's really, really good. He helps me in you know, a lot of ways, not just training kind of thing, but he he's a really good um, life coach as well. Hold on, my bro. Cup eye, bro. Just try and relax. Right. Our hip flexors, that's where they sit along here. See, because he's in a he's in that all day, these become tight. It's like anyone in an office job, when you're sitting all day, they get tight. You're showing great calmness. We'll just keep working together until we achieve our goal of 
me standing up and walking again. What we're trying to do, obviously, is to get some circulation going, is to get some movement going in the knee and the hip. And also, it gives him an opportunity to focus on his, on his breath. It all comes from your breath. Anxiety, instead of using your, your facial muscles to be able to work, use your breath, your core. He's got a never give up attitude. And you know, attitude like that is, that's what it's about. And, and you know, with all that attitude, it goes with bodybuilding. It goes with everything we do in life, eh? Attitude is everything, eh? That's what I reckon. Every time I see him in the gym working out or when I see him in an office working, I sometimes just stop and think how proud I am of where he is now. Despite being there with him, I still can never comprehend and fathom what he's um, going through and what he has gone through, what he's had to endure. I was 20 years old when I got married. My character's been built upon this trial. I feel like I've become a whole lot more happier, which is strange because I feel like I've done so much and I've accomplished so much and I just feel happy that I've been able to accomplish so much in a short amount of time. I am who I am today because of what's happened to Ephraim. Yeah, I remember the first time I went out in public after my accident, everyone kind of just not looking at me weird because they just look at me and kind of just, um, yeah, be cautious of me and just kind of just move out of my way. And yeah, I'm not really self-conscious, but I just kind of, I'll get annoyed, not at other people, but more annoyed with myself if there's something that I can't do. I do worry a little bit when he's on his own. I've become a little bit more protective in the sense that People just looking at him just because he's in a wheelchair. Yeah, it just makes me sad that a lot of people will stare down on him as well or look at him like um, he's different. And I know that he's not. He just has to do a lot of things differently now, but he's just very much the same person. Um, yeah, just makes just makes me sad. I, a lot of the times I have to try and hold it in because when I get like this, then he gets like that too. So I have to just stay positive and just, you know, ignore all of that stuff. So, yeah, sorry. Yeah, since my accident, uh, I've had to take nutrition a little bit more, not, not seriously, but a bit more just careful in the things that I eat. Um, I can't control uh, yeah, I don't really have control over my my bowels and stuff like that. So uh, I need to make sure that everything that I eat um, is is quite healthy and fresh. If I eat a lot of fried food or fast food, yeah, I can end up having accidents. Life was a lot more adventurous before the accident. We were able to go out on hikes. We were always out on date nights. We would go to the movies. We would always just find different things to do. Always traveling, just going for drives here and there. Since the accident, we've just been in this little dome or this little cloud of our own. We just kind of do our own thing. We spend a lot of time together. It can take a toll on us. But at the end of the day, you know, I still love her the same. I still um, think of her the exact same way. I just appreciate a lot more now. Sometimes I think of where we would be if he was still walking. I think we, I don't think we would be as close as we are now because of this. I'm just um, going to a meeting. Just because at church I have a, I call it calling or responsibility. I've always been involved with like uh, youth and stuff in church and then also outside of church as well. The first job I, 
What paid employment I had was um, as a youth worker, so... My faith is probably the most important thing, that and family. We thank thee, O God, for a prophet to guide us in these latter days. What I've been taught has just really kind of helped me to get through this past year since my accident. I'm never trying to inspire people, but I just have to try my best to live a good life, set a good example, and hope for the best. Before my accident, we both wanted to have kids, and so now, because just due to being paralysed, we can't have kids naturally. It's still, some, it's still something that we can do. We're going to try and look at what options are out there. I know there's IVF, and so we might try that, but it's a process, and financially, um, a process and also just the timing. When I see how far we've come in a year, I always imagine how far we will be in another year or in two years time um, and think that we'll do amazing things. Those first few days were really quite hard. I think I cried every night for maybe the first few months, actually. Yeah, there was a lot of tears. I was real, real sad and real down. And I remember thinking, you know, everything's kind of changed now. I'm not going to be able to do the things that I enjoy doing. But um, now I've realised that I can still do those things. Just got to keep on working and trying to achieve that goal. Just stay positive. Yeah, I'm really excited about what the future has to offer. I've always believed that you have to have something to do, something to work towards and someone to love. Yeah. When I was up on the waterfall and thinking I was going to jump off, I didn't really think about what could go wrong. I didn't think about the consequences, how it could affect not just me, but everyone around me who's close to me. I've just learned to appreciate the simple things in life and kind of just be cautious of the consequences or the decisions that you make, whether it be small or big. Attitude was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.